In this video, I'm going to talk through some of the most common metrics for evaluating the predictive fit of your model to data. And the specific metrics that I'm going to talk about in this video are the AIC, so that's the Akaiki Information Criteria, DIC, that's the Deviance Information Criteria, the WAIC, which has got two potential meanings depending on who you talk to. It's either the widely adopted information criteria or the Watanabe Akaiki Information Criteria and LUCV. So LUCV just stands for Leave One Out Cross Validation. So the idea which is common to all of these criteria is that we have a sample of data and we use that sample of data to fit our model. However, what we would like to do is we would like to know how well our model generalizes to out of sample prediction. So ideally what we would do is we would fit our model using one sample of data and then evaluate its predictive fit on another set of data. However, in real life data can be hard to come by and so we don't necessarily have an independent data set on which to evaluate the fit of our model. So often what we're forced to do is to evaluate the fit of our model to data using the same sample that we used to fit our model in the first place. So let me just say that again, the idea is that we're trying to determine how well our model generalizes to a new sample of data using the same sample of data that was used to fit the model in the first place. So what are some of the problems with doing this? Well, one of the main problems is selection bias. So because of the fact that we are using the same sample of data to fit, then test our model, we are going to have an issue with getting an overinflated sense of how well the model can predict out of sample data. And we run into the issue of having a overfit model. What do I mean by overfitting? Essentially, what this means is that you have a model which is fitting the noise in a data sample rather than the signal. And what that leads you to do is to build a model which is overly complex for a given circumstance, meaning that it won't actually generalize well to new samples of data. So all of these criteria, with the exception of LUCV, have to apply a kind of correction to correct for the fact that there is this selection bias going on. So all of these criteria aim to come out with some measure of out-of-sample predictive accuracy. But each of them goes about obtaining a measure of out-of-sample predictive accuracy in different ways. The first three criteria all basically evaluate the fit of the model on the data that was used to train the model, and then they subtract away a penalty term which is accounting for their selection bias. Common to all of these methods is that they evaluate the fit using some sort of measure of log likelihood, so the log probability. And common to all of these methods, the penalty here basically measures our degree of uncertainty in the parameter values. So starting off with the AIC, the measure of fit which AIC uses is the log likelihood evaluated at the maximum likelihood estimates of the parameters. The penalty which AIC applies to the measure of within sample fit is just the number of parameters in the model. And AIC has some theoretical basis when you look at large sample theory. But for more complicated models, the theoretical basis isn't really applicable and so encouragingly now quite a lot of people are moving away from AICs as a measure of out of sample fit. The DIC uses a similar measure of fit which is instead of being the log of the likelihood evaluated at the maximum likelihood estimates of parameters is the log likelihood evaluated at the map estimate. So that's the value of theta which maximizes the posterior density. However, the big step forward which DIC makes over AIC is applying a more general and useful measure of penalty. And the measure of penalty that it applies is two times the variance across all of your posterior draws. So imagine that we have S samples of our posterior of the log 
of the likelihood, so P of X, given theta J. So the idea here is that if we have a lot of uncertainty in our parameter values, then there will be a lot of uncertainty in the fit, which is measured by this variance term here. If we have a lot of uncertainty for each of the parameter values, then that's indicative of the fact that we have a model which is too complex for the given circumstance. In other words, it looks like we might be overfitting the situation. And so intuitively, that's how this penalty term here works for DIC. So both AIC and DIC use a measure of fit, which is essentially evaluated at a point estimate of the parameter value. What we would prefer is a measure of fit, which took account of the uncertainty in the value of theta. And that's exactly what WAIC does. So WAIC is a bit different. What it does is it takes the sum over all data points in your sample, so that's the sum from i equals 1 to n, of the log of the average value of the likelihood p of xi given theta j. So notice that I've got an xi here because we are summing the contributions from each of the individual points in our data. But the second term that we have here in this expression, essentially what this measures is the average fit of the model across all of our posterior uncertainty. So across all of our draws of theta from the posterior. The correction term is similar to that of DIC, except the fact that now what we do is we evaluate it point-wise. So we sum from i equals one to n of the variance across all of our posterior draws of the log of the probability of xi conditional on theta j. Finally, leave one out cross validation is slightly different to all of the aforementioned because essentially what it does is it does use out of sample data to measure the fit of the model. Repeatedly in leave one out cross validation, what we do is we partition our data into a, two subsamples, one of which is composed of n minus one data points, and the other one is composed of the remaining data point. And we use this larger partition to train our model, and we use the partition of one data point to test our model. And we repeat this process n times, where in each of the iterations we choose a different leave one out data point. So leave one out cross-validation doesn't actually need a penalty term here, because we actually are using a different data set to test the fit of our model. So the measure of fit which leave one out cross-validation uses is it's a pointwise sum from i equals 1 to n of the log of, again we need a term which is accounting for the uncertainty in the fit, and so now we need a sum over all s posterior draws of the probability of xi conditional on all those other points that we used to fit our model, and theta j. So I'm, I'm just going to write that again because I'm not sure whether you can see that down at the bottom part of the screen. For leave one out cross-validation, what we do is we sum point-wise of the log of 1 over s times the sum from j equals 1 to s of the probability of xi point xi, conditional on a model which has been fitted on all of the other data points, and theta j. And so this second term here is just sort of measuring the average fit of the model for that particular data point averaged over all of the posterior draws. So what do we think of each of these measures? What we can do is we can kind of evaluate them in a kind of two-dimensional way. In the bottom axis here, what I have is a sort of measure of computational time or complexity, and the vertical axis here is a measure of the approximation quality. And so the simplest measure is the AIC. It doesn't take very long to compute, but the approximation quality in general for out-of-sample fit is pretty poor. It's a pretty basic assumptions that underlie AIC. Slightly more complicated to fit is the DIC, but it has the benefit of the fact that now it's a less arbitrary measure of penalty. And so the approximation quality to out-of-sample fit is slightly better. So DIC is somewhere like here. 
And now if we consider WAIC, it's a slight improvement on DIC because of the fact that now we're including some uncertainty in the fit. And so WAIC typically doesn't take that much longer than DIC to compute and the approximation quality is quite a lot better. So WAIC is perhaps shifted a little bit to the right, but we're moving up here towards a better approximation quality. Leave one out cross validation is the best measure of all that we have here because really it is in fact using out of sample data to measure the fit of your model. But the problem with it is that you need to do this repeated partitioning for each of the end data points in your sample. And so it uses a hell of a lot more computational time. And so leave one out cross validation is somewhere out to the top right here. Something that's worth mentioning is that in R there is a very useful package which was created by Aki Vitari amongst others, which uses a approximation to leave one out cross-validation, which is based on Pareto smooth importance sampling. And so actually you can obtain a reasonably good measure of leave one out cross-validation in the same amount of time that it would to require you to estimate WAIC. So actually, if you use this package, you can obtain a pretty good estimator of leave one out cross-validation in a similar amount of time to WAIC.